Let's Podcast. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovius inside Eford Studios, downtown Raleigh. Thanks to Empire Properties and thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. If you are in charge of your office and you see what the calendar says, March, there's a really easy way to understand where your print costs are going because everybody's printing out brackets, Joe. They are. But these are things that you can understand and get a better handle of. Thanks to Copiers Cop Plus. Copiers-plus.com. Figure out what you don't know when it comes to your print and digital management needs. Were you that guy at the office printing out a bunch of brackets back in the day? Have you printed Unf out? Have you printed out brackets yet? Unfortunately, I was that guy. Yeah, of course you were. And then you know, Selection Sunday when I used to do the bracket for the News and Observer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to print out a few because I don't know if you know this. I don't like to use pencil. Yeah, I know. Even when I do crossword or Sudoku, I don't use pencil. So when I mess up, I, I start over. And that means I got to print something else out. <laughs> now, so you, <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, they, they ended up could use Copiers Plus, at least back in the day. There was one guy, I'm telling you, he would like print out his Kindle. There would be like books. There'd be pages. I'm talking like 70, 80 pages on the printer when I would go over there. So be, hold up, hold up. And you I would be like, is somebody printing out their book? So was he going to like archive.org or... Well, you know, yeah, like we Google had that at whatever? the paper. But no, I think he was just straight up printing off of his Kindle. He had pages of books <laughs> Jeez. on the printer. So you, ultimately you needed like, you know, like your blood sample, DNA, yeah. and your eye scan to, I mean, to print. I mean, because this jerk off ruined it for everybody. I mean, I know that there's a debate about return to office. I mean, for the <laughs> I get that there's a return to office debate. And and the crux of most return to office debates comes down to the fact that your large company uh, has a rent that they have to yeah, pay. Yeah. So you better use this freaking office. It's not about culture. <laughs> I'm not above stealing a double A battery here and that borrowing using right, 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 commandeering. Right. But that's actually one of the aspects <laughs> of office culture that I'm not gonna lie, I kind of miss. I was sure. like, oh, a, no, I, hey, I, I need a new pad. I need a new yellow pad. Will, Will's not gonna miss this four pack of double A's. Come on, mm. it's not that big of a deal. Oh, pen, uh, no big deal. Stapler, no big deal, right? So that's the one aspect of office culture that I don't now. Back in the day when the internet wasn't so readily available at high speeds. Let me tell you it's about half my iTunes library was amassed thanks to the 850 The Buzz T1 connection in the production room. <sighs> LimeWire, Audio Galaxy. You, you really had to be careful. You really had to be careful with LimeWire. Yeah. Why? Why is this three minute song? Why does this file like 400 <laughs> times bigger than? Oh, it's lossless. It's lossless audio, Joe. That's what it is. Oh, no. What have I done? No. <laughs> Speaking of two stations, one cup. Whoa. You don't know what hey, you walked hey, yourself whoa. into. Whoa. You I do did, not whoa. know. That can happen. People That's do that. A thing. Oh. As you like to say, there's a thing on the uh, internet for everyone. This is true. This is true. But not, you know what's funny about the, the LimeWire, Kazaa, Audio Galaxy days? The thing that actually would infuriate me more, not it was not, oh, I, oh, okay then. It was more the who is this acoustic guitar <laughs> dipshit that has Trojan Cover. horse the Arcade Fire EP that I'm trying to download because I read about them in Spin Magazine. Well, think about that, reading something about it in a magazine. I don't want this guy's cover of Coldplay's Yellow. I don't want that. What are we doing here? Anyway, um, that was not what I signed up for. So, copiers-plus.com. They could save you money, though. They could save you all of these things. <laughs> you know who needs saving right now? Oh. Wake Forest basketball right, their NCAA so tournament resume. They need some freaking saving. They fought Ow. back last night. Uh, it came down to the last minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a questionable call. Blah, 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 blah. Don't put yourself in a damn position to lose on the last bucket, which is exactly what happened to Wake Forest at home. They lost two games following the Duke triumph on the road, which fit the bill for the Demon Deacons this season. They just can't win on the road. All right, so you're back home. Write the ship. They did not write the ship. They did not come out looking hungry. This is something that Steve Forbes addressed after the game. Our friend Josh Grant, w WSJS, out in the triad, has this video. This is a disturbing thing from Steve Forbes. It's a, you know, it's obviously a bad time 
of the year to play to play like this at home. You know, when you have a lot riding on it, and we talked about it at halftime. I, you know, after the way we played in the first half, I was like, guys, this you know, the, the NC tournament things on the line here. We 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 got to play. We got to leave it out there. At least you got you got to go out there and leave. you can't come in here and feel like you didn't empty your tank. They emptied their tank. You know, and at the end, you know, we had a set defense. Guy fell down. I really thought the game was over. And then, you know, they get a jump ball out of it, throw it in. Fake, you know, we, we did a good job of guarding the guy coming around the handoff, and the guy made a shot, man. You know, and that's what happens when you don't, you don't respect the game early, you know, in the first half, you don't play right. And so credit to Georgia Tech for coming in here and getting one. So there you go. There's Steve Forbes again. Big thanks to Josh Graham for having that video from the Wake Forest loss yesterday to Georgia Tech. All Your right. deeks, Joe. All right. So a couple of things that reminded me to get back to, to the last point about Georgia Tech. Yeah. After I go off on this tangent here. Um, the only thing we don't have in this studio in terms of local or in-state teams is something Wake Forest. I've been on the lookout. The clock doesn't count. Yeah, right. Because they're they're just part of the conference. Yeah, I've been looking for a pennant. So my question is: Will we improve the Deeks' luck if we get an item in here stat, or, or as it has been advanced to me, am I the problem? Mm-hmm. Because since declaring them my Deeks, well, bad things have happened to them. This is so. This should is I disavow my Deeks, or should I embrace it and lean in? And get some sort of Tim Duncan poster back there. Look on the screen. Okay. I just found something for thirty bucks. That is a fantastic vintage Wake Forest felt pennant. It's thirty bucks, six <laughs> bucks shipping. But that, like we need something to to improve the Deeks mojo. Because buy that because maybe it's there's uh, there's just a basic ass Demon Deacon. Or, that's, that's like a late two thousands Demon Deacon. Or should I, I accept that. that it's me? Oh, $45 for this vintage one? Dang, man. Okay, let's let's not get crazy. No, I understand. I, I like the $30 one. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see some of the... Ooh, a little mini helmet for 4 bucks. <laughs> and get one of those. I have a mini helmet at home, like a tiny mini helmet. $75 for this old school? Dang. Some of these, some of these pennants are expensive. I like the walking deke. I do like the walking deke as well. But I think what I'm going to do is I scroll back up. I like this one this is very this is the aesthetic it's 30 dollars. it's us it fits the aesthetic that we've got going on right now i gotta find a prominent you, you could put it right next to the canes pennant actually okay. um that's right. actually a spot that we can fit right, so, it. so we, we need I, right, I, i'll get this we pennant. double lean double lean then. Right. okay that's number one um yeah man you can't what actually hurts there is i've been like the biggest efton reed fan on the mm-hmm. planet yeah and Ndongo put his Ndongo in that guy's ear to win that game. Like, you need one stop, man. Pretty sure that was on an 850 The Buzz computer back in the day when <laughs> you, I downloaded you, a music file. You need one stop, brah. You're supposed to be a, a stopper. Uh, that's a killer, man. It's a killer way to lose. Uh, reminds me, though, of the words from Churchill. Success is never final. Failure is never fatal. Mm-hmm. Which is odd, considering he was the maestro behind World War II. Mm-hmm. And actually, yes, failure was fatal. But when applied to sports, it makes a whole lot more sense. It, it does. It does. <laughs> it does. So the thing about Wake is they get another crack at Clemson, which would be uh, helpful in the in the Giulio obvious rules of the bracket. How are you doing against teams who are in this tournament? This is true. And then obviously they're going to have to win some games. In, they are in, in they DC. Are. Like there's no way around that. Now, now let me make my Georgia Tech point because when we talk to Damon Stoudemire at the at the ACC tip off this year. We were like wholly unprepared to speak with this man because he was, he was great. It was speed dating, right? But it he was. was awesome. He was he great. was awesome. Yeah. Under the old Seth Greenberg. Wow, these guys are a whole lot better than we thought they'd be. <laughs> Rules for ACC Coach of the Year. Damon Stoudemire is absolutely the fit for that Seth Greenberg plaque. The Georgia Tech seven and twelve. And you tell me which teams in the ACC would sign up right now mm-hmm. for Georgia Tech's wins. Carolina, Duke, Wake, Clemson, Syracuse, Florida State, Miami. 
It's pretty good. Are you kidding? That's pretty good. What bizarro world is Georgia Tech living in right now? But here's what's funny. Here's what's funny about Seth Greenberg. You invoke Seth Greenberg as the memorial man. We thought you were well, still alive, but I, I, no, but it, it, he's not in the ACC. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless we're talking about the ACC network, but he's not going to coach in the ACC mm -hmm. anymore. So the Seth Greenberg Memorial Award could actually be double edged. Because you do have the, man, we thought you were going to suck. We thought you were going to suck out loud. Our bad. Here's, a, here's your coach Wait, of the Pastor year. did win one of those. He called his shot. <laughs> I was there in that press conference. I think you were too at PNC Arena when they beat State. And he said, I, mean, I told my AD when I got hired, if I win one ACC game this year, I should be coach of the year. He called his shot. All right. So there's there's the Seth Greenberg Memorial Coach of the Year Award. Man, we thought you were going to suck, but you actually ended up being pretty good. And then there's the, man, you really screwed it up with the NCAA tournament, didn't you? And that's going to Steve Forbes. Oh, oh, oh. The, you know, you're certifiably insane to leave us out of the tournament. Oh. Well, you know what? You put yourself in a position to give the committee a reason to leave you out. And that's kind of where we're at with Steve Forbes and Wake Forest right now. That's <laughs> the charm. Yeah. Fuck around. And you're going to find, find out. out. You're going to find out. Uh, before we bring on Patrick Stevens to talk about this effing around and fighting out for Wake Forest, uh, we should note that Armando Baycott had his second senior day last night. And there's all sorts of rhythms. That's it? There's rhythms to the universe. Wait, wait. That's it? That, that's it. Are we sure? That's it. His there's first, no loophole? His first game, if I have this correct, was on November 6, 2019 when North Carolina beat Notre Dame 76 to 65. His last home game at the Smith Center was against Notre Dame. How about that? How about that for a little bit of synergy? The roster that year for Armando Baycott uh, is a little bit cursed. This is the Cole Anthony season. The lost season. The of lost 19, season 20. of 19, man, with Garrison Brooks, Cole Anthony, Leaky Black, Baycott, Christian Keeling, Andrew Playtech, Justin Pierce, Brandon Huffman, and Walker Miller. Mm, that was your group. There's some names. That was there's some names there. Although Walker Miller did get in with the club trillion uh, in that game, from what I can tell, uh, looking at the Ken Palm roster. But yeah, and because he already got a senior night last year, and they gave him a white jersey, or I'm sorry, they gave him a blue jersey on a, in a in a frame. They gave him a white jersey this go round. It's it's done. It's over. It's 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 a wrap for Armando Baycott. I mean, listen, it, after I, I think. Let's cover, uh, you know, we want to cover the Hurricanes like they're in Toronto. Mm -hmm. If we were covering Carolina like we were the Yankees in New York, mm -hmm. the redemption story of being number one last year and in the, in the ignominy of missing the tournament as the number one team in the country preseason to come back with many of the same parts, two of the same pillars in RJ Davis and Armando Baycott and rewrite their story here in their mulligan year. And now RJ is probably going to come back for a, a second mulligan. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's commendable. It's remar it's also remarkable, and uh, I think Hubert Davis should be the ACC Coach of the Year. We struggle sometimes to just recognize, hey, you know, sometimes the guy who's doing the best job is the guy who has the best team. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this ridiculous, you know. Let's grade on a curve on on our expectation from the outside and exceeding those, rather than just being the guy who's done the best job this season. And I think that is Hubert Davis. <laughs> Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, he is Patrick Stevens, Washington Post, our senior bracketologist, king of the bobbleheads. Before we start, Patrick, do we have a bobblehead of the day? Yes, since this will probably be the last time I'll be speaking to you from home, right? Because ACC tournament next week. That's right. We'll see you. I, I felt like I needed to come up. I needed to up my game one last time. And I thought that it's spectacular. I, I don't know. I mean. Yeah. I, I, I thought that I needed to come up with a way to tie it into your local listeners. Maybe okay. not something they're super familiar with, but it is a it is a triangle tie, and it is something that uh, you know J Joe will be immensely thrilled that I have figured out a way to get lacrosse into. We've got John Donowski, the all time oh! winning coach. <laughs> Jeez. There he Speaking is. Of redemption stories. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo. How? 
<laughs> wow. Wait. <laughs> okay. How did you find that? What, what uh, was I that believe from? our chase shipped one to me. I think that was how that one worked out. Okay. Oh. Okay. Beauty. So Speaking he was, they did it the if you if you know celebrating four hundred wins. So it was I see. I see. All right, let's let's do uh let's do some quick lightning uh ACC bracket. Can I, can I jump in for a second? You're talking about the ACC coach of the year a moment ago. Did yeah, you we know were. that for the last 22 years of his career that Mike Shashevsky did not win the ACC coach of the year. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So, I mean, that's one of those things that uh, you know, I've always said that and it kind of ties into what you're saying. The the way that ACC coach of the year voting goes in a number of places is all right, we were wrong. So let's double down on being dumb. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. It's it is the it is the dumb, and we all recognize it too. That's the thing. It's not like it hasn't been called out yet. We still do it. It is what it is. Kind of like Wake Forest. Hey guys, don't do anything dumb. You, you you broke through. You beat Duke, and they've gone and lost three in a row uh, before they take on Clemson. It, it's gone from let's just send them to Dayton, Patrick. To do they even get sent at all at this point? Uh, they 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 have some work to do, and beating Clemson would certainly help this weekend, but. Uh, they they made their life a lot tougher last night in particular. The other two losses may be not as damaging, but to lose at home, uh, quad three loss, uh, when, you, when one of the things you were banking on was the fact that you hadn't done anything ridiculous. Um, well, now you have. And, and yes, I know Georgia Tech has beaten a lot of good teams. Uh, and I agree with you, by the way, getting to seven and 12 with, with that roster has been a remarkable accomplishment mm -hmm. uh, for, for Damon Stoudemire. But for Wake Forest, like th this is a team that quite candidly is not playing like it wants to be in the NCAA tournament. And so there is a, there is some work that Wake has to do. I mean, right now, I think they would be the seven seed uh, in the conference tournament. So that could be a scenario where you've got to beat Clemson, uh, maybe win uh, a, another game, you know, first or second round game, and then a quarterfinal. I mean, it might be at least three wins at this point for Wake Forest to put itself in, the, in a position to be in the field. You're a, a smart person when it comes to such things, and I, 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 I apologize for not preparing you. Uh, there, there was a lot of talk last week about being able to game the net, and I'm curious, uh, even though we don't know the formula, you, you've tried to explain this to me before, that there are way why a why they don't tell us the formula. There's some sort of rolling math involved that you've explained to me before, and then b like isn't like why are we acting like it's it's an offensive concept that the net could possibly be manipulated? Like it's shouldn't we all try to figure out? Yeah, it's an equation. Like yeah. you, you put you put data <laughs> like, in, it spits out a number. You can manipulate it. This doesn't mean the Big Twelve is doing something, you know, conniving behind yeah. the scenes. They're just trying to improve their lot in life. I mean, I, I'm so confused. And, and I, don't, I don't even know if it's a conference wide deal, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it might just be each individual program has decided for its own individual reasons. Well, I want to go play a bad non conference schedule because. I'm a first year coach and I want to stack up wins. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an entirely new roster, which a lot of people do these days. And I want to figure, have some time to figure things out. I'm Jamie Dixon and I just like to play bad non-conference schedules. <laughs> However you want to do it, you know, that, that's, Our friend. <laughs> that's, uh, that's basically, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's a conference wide mandate or anything. I don't know if a code red was sent out from uh, the big 12 offices. To no, no, it was Jamie Pollard. Cause he's the head of the committee. So it's all, um, this is all an Iowa State conspiracy. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, but and what was your question originally? I got I lost. The reason they do not release the equation oh, is because okay. there's a so, rolling math so, concept involved. So here. I believe I'm not 100 percent sure of this, but but I've been led to believe that the data that goes into this they they basically tweak the the formula as you get an extra year's worth of data year after year after year. So. I think the reason why the formula has not been revealed is that there isn't a permanent formula. I don't think the formula changes massively year over year, but I don't think it's permanent. Now, as Ovius was just saying, like it's data inputs. So you can look over now, what, four or five seasons worth of net data, and you can see which things move the needle and which things don't. And you know, when people talk about it, I know we've, we've said this too, that you're looking at uh, margin of victory. Okay, that's not in, but efficiency is in there. Basically, what you're saying is, is it's good to win by as much as possible. So oh. you go out and 
you go out and win by as much as possible. And I know we've also talked about this. It's a lot easier to say, oh, well, they went out and won by these games by 30 than to actually go do it. Like, it's hard to win games by 30 in, in Division One college basketball. So I, this is all a setup for me to ask you, how in the world is Syracuse number 84 in the net? <laughs> um, it's wild when you look at who they've beaten and who they've played. <laughs> Although they're, they're, they're back on the bubble. What? <laughs> well, they're, they're a ways off after losing last night. Um, I, I, had, uh, I did an appearance uh, with, with Brent Axe last week, and I had one particularly um, feisty Syracuse fan uh, telling me all these various mathematical reasons why the Orange were definitely going to be a tournament team if uh, if they beat Louisville and Clemson. And, well, now we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, thing. I guess you don't have to worry about that. But there's, um, always the, there's always the ACC tournament. I mean, this is the life of Syracuse. It doesn't matter if Jim Beheim's the coach or Autry's the coach. So, but the, you know, you look at what Syracuse has done or rather what it hasn't done, and it has all of these really close victories, even into quad four. Their quad four victories are by two over Louisville, by 11 over New Hampshire, by 12 over Niagara, by 12 over Canisius. Now, it's not easy to beat a team by 30, but those are the sorts of teams that an NCAA tournament team in a power conference probably goes and wins by 20 to 25 points. Uh, And meanwhile, when you look at all those losses that they had, particularly the quad one losses, they got blitzed by 17 by Tennessee, by 20 by Duke, by 36 by Carolina, lost by 19 to Gonzaga, by 25 to Clemson, uh, by 29 to Wake Forest, and by 22 to Virginia. So that's what has, that's what leads to the incredible uh, degree of disparity between Syracuse's result-based metrics, and, and, you know, they have some decent secondary wins. They swept Pitt, they beat Virginia Tech at home, uh, and they generally didn't do anything they weren't supposed to do besides lose to Florida State at home. But they have all those blowout losses, and that's why the more predictive metrics um, are not as favorable towards the Orange. So when they win, they don't win by enough, and when they lose, they lose big. They Correctly. Okay. Correct. Correctly, I just a- added something. New and there. is what was St. John's that first year? They were like seventy-eight well, in the net or something well, like that. I, when they got in. Didn't I send you a chart on this? Uh, you, you did. Why I do you? Gotta be, why you got to be the one who's right? I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't they like were that. seven. They were seventy-three in the net. Okay, I think they're still the highest team, highest ranked net team to get in that large bid. Uh, actually, Rutgers at seventy-seven two years ago. Okay. So they're not out of it just because their net is 84, I guess. No, they're they're not. Their real problem is that they just don't have a lot of high-end wins to work with. I mean, they have that Carolina win. Like, they they have okay wins. They've got a fair number of quad two wins. But, um, you know, overall, they're two and eight in quad one. They're six and ten in quad two. Um, And much as we want to sit here and and talk about the committee maybe being a little too process-oriented, if you have on your team sheet, these things where it's like 84 net, 83 Ken Palm, 41 strength of record, 36 KPI. Anybody reasonable is going to look at that and say, huh, I wonder why there's such a huge disparity. And then dig in and realize that that the Orange has played so poorly uh, against all these teams that actually will be in the tournament yeah. as opposed to, well, they beat Notre Dame at home by three. Yeah, and that's not good. Uh, so I was hoping that Wake Forest and – um, Clemson and Virginia and Pitt and Syracuse would act accordingly down the stretch and, and win games and give the ACC six teams in the NCAA tournament field. I'm now starting to think maybe four is probably be, closer to the truth. Could four or five? It, it, it certainly, um, you know, I feel like there's really only you got three teams safely in, and then Virginia, Pitt, and Wake Forest that that have work to do to varying degrees. Patrick Stevens, Washington Post. We'll see you next week, dude. I'm very That's excited exciting. about this. Uh, I'm Seth's got cool. a pizza place for us. What's that? Seth has a pizza place for us. Okay, him. wow. Yeah. Let's do I knew it. he was talking about reaching out. I didn't know he actually had a place figured out. So Let's that's do good. it. Oh, he's always got a plan, especially when pizza's involved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Thanks so much, fellas. Housekeeping. Big thanks to Enovana for sponsoring housekeeping. Check them out. E-N-O-V-A-N-A.com. Green cleaning. Quick, efficient, local, which is important. And they are employees of Enovana, meaning 
You're not dealing with like a contractor on a contractor on a contractor. Direct communication is always key. They came out to my house yesterday, Joe. They did a fantastic job as they always do. You can do uh, one-time cleaning. Just check them out. Get your, you know, get an idea of what kind of work they do. Or you can go ahead and schedule that recurring cleaning like I've got every two weeks because March, man, they call it madness for a reason. I don't know when I'm home. Rarely time for home. For a variety of reasons. We've got hockey. There's indoor percussion stuff. We got the ACC tournament. We got the NCAA tournament. We're doing live shows, blah, blah, blah. You don't have time. So get Enovana to take care of that for you. E-N-O-V-A-N-A.com. Speaking of big things that happened in March, we're going to be at Longleaf Swine on March 21st, 1 o'clock for a special live show for that big basketball bracket bonanza. Ooh, that's a lot of bees. All the bees. I was there on this past Friday. I know you wanted me to get the chicken pot pie at Longleaf. Yes, I did. I didn't. The reason why is because they had a brisket melt sandwich on the menu that night. Oh, I had to do the brisket melt sandwich and it was absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's like a dinner special. It's a, it's a, one of those dinner special things. Oh, I was there Saturday for the game, for the state game. What'd you have? Chicken pot pie. Of course you did. <laughs> 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 of course you had the chicken you, pot pie. You know, I, yeah, you get obsessed I with struggle. things, man. I get this, I get in the groove. Sometimes I feel like you should get assessed. And yeah. I'd be, I'd be, it'd be interesting to see what would what would spit out. <laughs> but yeah, big thanks to Longleaf Swine. Check them out. Longleafswine.com. You can order online. You can get the catering done if you've got some sort of office event. Speaking of return to office, birthdays. Birthdays. Mm -hmm. You know, mine's coming up on the 19th. Mm -hmm. We're gonna celebrate on the 21st at Longleaf. It'll be a good time. Mm -hmm. What? Do you want do you want to have your birthday mm -hmm. party there on, on the 25th? Maybe. Okay. Well, maybe I'll take we my birthday back. That's right. We are taking your birthday back. We also got a big announcement on your birthday. Ooh, not that you're turning forty nine. Yeah, no, that's not the that's not the announcement. Mm -hmm. But we'll have an announcement. So again, go check them out. Longleafswine.com. Also, big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm, InsureGarner.com, the OG Insurance.com. I need like one person to tell me that they've used the QR code, and then I'll <laughs> stop doing it. <laughs> Email us to let us know that that's happened. Email us. Email us. I mean, it's only got to be helpful, right? Yeah, it's can't fair. hurt. Yeah, you're right. You're right you know what can't that. hurt either? Give them a call. 919-779-8277. Nicole in the office is there and Garner. You're going to have a conversation. You're going to save money. Everybody wins. So while Patrick was lost in some deep NCAA tournament seeding scenarios, I was on the DraftKings app looking at which quick same game parlay I was going to lose today. All right. I lost yesterday's. So you're 0 for 2. 0 for I, 2. On. I went 3 and 0 yesterday. Good for you. Big thanks to Armando Baycott squeaking out to that 14th point. Uh, Cormac Ryan, that was a layup. And then Illinois lost the game, but won in the first half. So those first half bats coming in handy. So we're going to go to the Europa League. I'm so proud of you right now. I'm just getting the hell out of the I ACC. Just, I just got a tingle. Good for you. What sport is this? Soccer. Oh, yes. I'm, I think. Give me an under. Tell me it's an no, under. I'm no, going, I'm going for a quick same game parlay. Okay. Uh, this is a match between FK Karabag <laughs> and Leverkusen. Lever. Cassin. Yeah, Leverkusen. That's that's how you pronounce it. Wait, um, it. Is it two L's? No, it's just one. Okay. Leverkusen. This is actually taking place tomorrow at 1245. So we'll know the result by the time we get to the live show. Okay. okay. Uh, tomorrow Confused. at 2 o'clock. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is soccer. So I'm going to do a quick same game parlay. Um, and I'm going to go with Leverkusen on the money line. Over two and a half goals scored and a mean a a mean a dilly as the anytime goal score okay that's plus 210 Ten the bucks. whole thing the whole thing plus 210 that's it that's it oh they must be some kind of favorite then <laughs> sure use the promo code OG24 <laughs> as as uh as sports wagering is going live on March 11th, and DraftKings has partnered up with us here on the OG. We love that. And to celebrate, new customers who download the DraftKings Sports app 
and use that promo code OG24, get up to $300 in bonus bets when you place a $5 bet once they are live. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Sign up with promo code OG24 to get up to $300 in bonus bets once mobile sports wagering goes live. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook coming soon to North Carolina on March 11th with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-185-543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only, subject to regulatory licensing requirements, maximum $300 in bonus bets, not available for use until March 11th of 2024. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit wagering and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. Nailed it. You did this time. Again. Uh, and I went 3-0 and yesterday, so I'm giving you two first half bets today. What do you got? I have UCF at, I like to take home teams in college basketball. I like to take home teams in the first half as dogs in college basketball, especially UCF at home against number one, Houston getting four and a half points in the first half of this basketball game. UCF has already beaten outright Kansas and Texas on their home floor in their first year in the big 12 Houston next week gets can next uh, this weekend gets Kansas. They ain't paying attention to my boy Johnny Dawkins and the and the uh, the night storm there. So give me those four and a half points in the first half. And since I've been telling you what a monster UConn is, well, it's time to fade UConn. Marquette at home will fight back tonight. My guy Shaka getting two and a half points in the first half of this game. I think the Golden Eagles soar in the first twenty minutes of this basketball game, plus two and a half points. So you walked into the studio this morning and you chose violence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, there's only certain things that we fundamentally disagree over. This just happens to be one of the things we fundamentally disagree. over. You walked in, you were like, you don't like being challenged. No, I said, you don't like being called out when you have a ridiculous take. Well, see, here's the thing. I think you <laughs> there's and a slight I, difference. I think there. you and I, I think you and I, when it comes to NC state in our conversation yesterday, I think it comes down to, as 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 Obi Wan Kenobi would say, a certain point of view. Yes, and sometimes I think that you're so caught up in NC State bullshit that you can't see the forest from the trees. Sometimes that's fair. That's a fair assessment. But that's that you're a product of your environment, right? Okay, you covered NC State. You've been around the program for a long time. You have a lot of connections to the program, so you get a decidedly. I'm not saying anything out of turn mm -hmm. here. You get a decidedly NC State point of view. Yes, I don't. Now, that's a byproduct of what I've done for 25 years, which has been more about, man, I'm just rooting for the show. Just give me entertainment, right? All that kind of stuff. And I can kind of walk away from looking at things from an NC State point of view all the time. And yesterday, you and I got into, I guess, a little bit of a disagreement about North Carolina, Duke, and you're like obsessed with the misses more than the hits. When it comes what to do you mean? like this idea that North Carolina and Duke are going to find themselves live in life like everybody else in the NIL era. And you're, and you're making the face as you apply your numbing cream to the back of your neck. All right. I don't see it that way. Okay. And the reason why I don't see it that way is because both those programs have shown you time and time again, they are committed. I'm actually going to use the phrase you love to use all the time. The standard is the standard when it comes to Duke basketball and Carolina basketball, and they are not going to suffer losing for very long. If they think that something's not working, they'll go back out there and they'll spend the money necessary to make it work. Now, there are some inherent differences between Carolina and Duke when it comes to money that NC State will never be able to catch. But I think what I'm trying to say is ultimately true about NC State. While I think it's time for NC State and Kevin Keats to go in different directions after seven years of not great results for a variety of reasons, but the numbers are the numbers. They're not great. It's time for them to move on. It's really not going to matter if NC State doesn't commit to basketball the way they theoretically want basketball to succeed. Look, I'll actually use a conversation that you and I have had with Elliot Avent a lot of times. Anytime people start getting on Elliot, Elliot Avent's ass about success, mm -hmm. what do you and I both like to point out about NC State baseball? Oh, well, the, the money and the 
facilities compared to their competitors is he's fighting left-handed. He's fighting left-handed and he is succeeding while fighting left-handed. NC State problem is that they haven't been able to find a basketball coach consistently that has been able to fight left-handed. So you got to find you got to find the lane. What are you going to be? Are you going to find a coach that's going to give you an identity that is different than NC State than that's different than Duke and Carolina and fight with that hand behind your back or is Boo Corrigan, like we talked about yesterday, going to re-envision the program for the next era of college basketball with NIL? But this idea that Duke, that Duke and Carolina, well, they've been blessed with Hall of Fame coaches. Let me tell you something, dude. At this point, based on how they've been built up, they're not coming back. They are committed to being good at basketball. And they will continue to fight on that hill for that sort of thing, which I just don't see from NC State. Yeah, I, I would say to support your argument, the Matt Doherty years... The, the standard is different for Carolina. Yes. Right? He had the number one team in the country in his first year. He ends up getting fired by his third. You know where your NC State mentality came through? It was last year when North Carolina didn't make the NCAA tournament after being a, a number oh. one team. And and, the, and you're like, they just got they to a final. They literally just went to the national they championship were, They were game. a half away from winning. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good enough and for them. <laughs> that's not good enough for them. It's, it's uh, just not. Listen, I, I will say this. Listen, I understand what you're saying about their commitment and their I agree with you based mm-hmm. on what we've seen. The one blip under Carolina was Matt Doherty, and they did not suffer that bullshit Hell at all. Hell no, man. They didn't and even you, suffer it with Guthridge. And you could and say... two Final Fours! And you could say it was about Miss Linda, and you could say it was about treating the players. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. ultimately, it was about, hey, we have a standard here, and this is what it is. Yes. I do think... I don't think Roy Williams gets enough credit, believe it or not, for saving the program in the manner that he did when he came back from Kansas. Never forget, he did not have to leave Kansas and mm-hmm. do what he did to save his alma mater, and he did. Um, that's lightning in a bottle twice, though. Dean Smith and Roy Williams is lightning in a bottle twice. Will Duke have lightning in a bottle without Mike Shashevsky? I, I just I'm looking at this more of a of of a ten thousand foot view of these programs. Sure, you say they're going to remain committed, they're going to remain competitive. Roy Williams won three national titles between 2005 and 2017. That's special. That's why that's he's a, a Hall of Famer. Lot. Dean Smith only won two. Man. I know, that, but that's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Mike Shashevsky won five national titles in his tenure. That's why he's the greatest to ever do it. Between 90 and 15. Yeah, the best to ever 35 do 35 years. Yeah. I, yeah. So why do you think someone is going to be able to match the best that ever did it? Well, I think we're talking that's about... That's what I'm saying. I think we're talking about two different things. I, Carolina... Carolina, I do think, is more of in the Kentucky category, the Kansas category. Those are programs that have proven they could win with different coaches over different eras. Mm -hmm. Duke has not proven that they are something beyond Mike Krzyzewski. And spare me, you know, the 77 Final Four and whatever they were before Mike and ESPN made them who they are. But this is what I talk about the apparatus that is now at Duke. I think that yeah. they are positioned. No, they are they're positioned to do it. They have a general manager. They have the money. They have the boot. They have all that kind of stuff. These are all now. Duke is specifically set up to be successful in this era. Yes. In in having a Hall of Fame coach is also kind of this concept of another era of college basketball. Yes. My sentiment to you about Duke and Carolina is the same sentiment I have for every program in the NIL era. It's it's going to be extremely difficult on an annual basis to be successful, at, mm-hmm. even at a normal standard, let alone Carolina or a blue blood standard. Mm-hmm. Carolina in the NIL era has not been consistent. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's just a hard fact number right there. Mm-hmm. They have a final in the NIL era, 22, 23, 24. They have a final four national championship appearance. They have a they have a a pox on their family sure. being the number one team in the country in the preseason and missing the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now they're back in a situation where they should be in the final four this year. Yeah. And they're in a situation where they're probably going to win the ACC regular season and could win the ACC title. Yeah. Duke in the NIL era. Now Duke is more positioned in NIL and portal, but they haven't really used the portal only because they've been turning over their roster so much since 11. Yeah. And that's more in line with what, now every program has to do. Okay. So yeah, they had a final four team in K's last year in 22 In 23. They win the ACC championship. They won five fewer games. 
this team is is going to be a if this team makes the Sweet 16, it'll be a successful season in my opinion. Sure, but that's not a successful season by Duke standard. But they put themselves in a position to be there. That's the point. NC State yeah. can't even do that. They can't and even do that. That's fair. But what but I'm saying to you is you that, can't. that's not because Duke and Carolina have been successful. That's not because you've got two Hall of Fame coaches that have been making that run the entire time. Let's oh, not, you mean this year? Let's, let's not forget that Tony Bennett managed to carve oh. out his own identity and his own culture at Virginia while these two guys were running hot. And Tony Bennett's about to retire because he doesn't want to do any of this anymore. Now, I agree. That's a separate <laughs> conversation. Yeah. But my point is there are ways to get in the game. There are ways to get in the game while it's people act like NC State is the only other team in the ACC when it comes to this kind of stuff, as though other ACC teams don't exist and have to compete with what happens at Duke and Carolina. Well, I mean, geography, it, it's a little bit of a different equation. Dude, it's That's 2024. Awesome. Geography doesn't matter anymore. The conference <laughs> isn't even the same anymore. No, I, the you're, not even even seeing Duke, you're not even seeing Duke and Carolina home and home anymore. I mean... You're not Carolina. You're going to see Carolina but, home and home. Yeah. Fine. But the point is that there are other games that you play. There are oh, yeah. other ways to carve out. But your I'm niche. saying that's all under the old. And NC state has convention. routinely screwed it up. I routinely screwed it up. Right. And then they throw their hands up in the air. Like, well, why aren't we this? Well, have you committed to doing this? And I would say the answer to that is no, they have not. Cause they're constantly infighting about what they want to be. Constantly, yeah. constantly, you know, like Mac Brown came back to Carolina. He learned real quick. Oh yeah. Mac, thanks for coming back. And thanks for glad handing all the boosters and stuff like that. But we all know what really runs the show at Carolina. And he learned that again. He learned it back in 1997. He learned it again. You know, Mike Elko basically came in and he basically utilized Duke basketball to help him out and kind of rebrand Duke basketball. And you're going to see the same thing with Manny Diaz at Duke. They know what the score is, man. At NC State, and I've been arguing this for 20 years almost, the shift has gone over to football. So what is it that you actually want to be? And I think right now, it looks like football is that priority. And that's fine. Yeah, that's not. I'm, I'm saying that's perfectly cool. So if football is your priority, then you have to find a coach that can fight with their left hand tied behind their back in the same way that Elliot Avent has to do with baseball because there's only so much money, man. Only so much and money. I don't disagree with you about the level of commitment. I think what you're dismissive of mm -hmm. in these previous 30 years has been the willingness. First of all, you have to have a coach who's willing, whether you believe it or not, you have to have a coach who was willing to come here and fight against those two schools yeah, and those two coaches. Okay. That was a reality in the coaching business. And that's weak whether, shit. No, but whether you want to recognize it or not, it no, was I, a reality. I recognized it, and I've said it, and I'll say it again. That's weak shit. And it, so first of all, you have to have someone who's willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not weak. It's, it's weak. It, it's about your next job. No. I, no matter how many times I tell you, it's about your next contract. Are you going to have, are you going to have as an individual coach, mm -hmm. are you going to have more of a, of a path to success in your own financial security by fighting against Mike Krzyzewski and Roy Williams or going to Georgia or going to Alabama or going to another SEC job where you don't have to deal with those teams. Well, again, the point that you're making for me is you're acting as though NC State is the only it's one. It's not NC State. I'm just saying when you are in the triangle, you are directly compared to those schools. Mm -hmm. the, the benefit Tony Bennett had at Virginia was while competing with them. And go back and look how many times he actually played Duke and Carolina twice yeah. in the same season. Not a lot. It wasn't a lot. While... While competing against them, you're not directly compared to them. So there is a difference. Mike Bray was the same way at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Mike Bray would have been a fantastic hire back in 05 mm -hmm. for NC State, 06 for NC State. Uh, it's a math guy, a DC guy who would have said, I give no fucks about competing against these two. Right. But that was a reality in the coaching business. What I'm saying to you now is in the NIL world, everybody is pretty much in the same boat. And it's a year to year proposition. And to your point, it's about commitment. You asked yesterday, why didn't NC State get Hunter Salas? The answer, Hunter Salas is making about $400,000 from Wake Forest Collective. Mm -hmm. So instead of paying one, why don't they have Rob Dillingham? I could guess that Rob Dillingham is getting close to a million dollars yeah. from Kentucky. I could guess. If you, I don't know that one definitively. You either got to be able to find the diamonds in the rough or you got to be able to commit to what the money's going to be. Right. So the mistake NC State made this year specifically taking away all of the other stuff they decided to pay a hundred thousand dollars to three players 
instead of going out and committing to a Hunter Salas for $400,000. That's the mistake that they made this year. But every year, that's going to be the challenge. And I don't care if you're Duke, Kansas, Carolina, UCLA, Indiana, who are all going through it, by the way. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that you're going to have to deal with. Next year, Duke gets Cooper flag, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's a year they're supposed to win a national championship. Yeah. Cooper Flag doesn't come around every year. No, he doesn't. Even under even they, in the, even he, in their one and done. And they years. know that. I know they know that, but I think Mike Shashevsky wins a national championship with that type of player. Mm. So we'll see. We'll mm. see what John does. It's not that easy, dude. Again, but that that's their standard. Mm. And that's maybe where we disagree. And I think that I think where you and I disagree ultimately is NC State stand. I saw this in the YouTube comments. I was going to go through some YouTube comments, but the biggest one that I thought was interesting was. It's pretty telling that people now pine for what the Herb Sendak yeah. years were. And that's how low the standards have gotten at NC State. Think it's about changed. that. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. And talking about Duke and Carolina is to me distracting from what the real issues are, your own commitment to the bit. And I've been questioning that about NC State for a while now. Big thanks to Hometown Realty for sponsoring Ovi's and Gilio. Check them out, myhtr.com. When you drive by the sign in Garner, it actually brings big, big blessings. Big blessings. Uh, but it can also bring big blessings when it comes to buying and you're selling your home with ease. So go to myhtr.com. Also, big thanks to Whitaker and Hammer. Check them out online, wh.lawyer. It's funny, Patrick has put me in my thought process now about, damn it, when are we actually going to have to leave for the ACC tournament next week? NC State might screw up our plans. Spe I did not realize that until talking to someone at NC State yesterday. I'm like, wait a second. You guys are going to be like, at brutal. worst, 9 and 11. You're going to be the 10th seed? Hopefully, we will not have any traffic violations. But if we do, mm. I'm going to hit we up have, WH. We have a friend. Dot lawyer. Again, that's WH.lawyer. And, of course, Two Roosters, now part of our group of corporate champions here on OG Media LLC. Two Roosters ice cream. Check them out. Two roosters.com locations across the triangle. They got that location at PNC arena, which always comes through in the clutch when you've got kids. Like you want your kids to sit and enjoy a game and not be squirmy. Ice cream. Get the ice cream and a helmet. Soft serve with um, sprinkles. Do you have a business partner that needs to chill and watch basketball on the fifth floor of PNC arena? Yes. Ice cream. Bourbon coffee. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> the official dessert of the OG. So go to tworoosters.com. They're changing their flavors all the time. They got their traditional goodies, but sometimes they go a little off the map, and that's what makes two roosters, two roosters, including the pizza flavor, which I'm going to have to try this week. <laughs> Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, it's our friend Bomani Jones. Right Time is the podcast. He's joining us from New York. Bo, what's up, man? Hey, man. All good. How about you, fellas? So I was on a um, I was on a dumb walk for my dumb mental health yesterday listening to the podcast, and I had two immediate thoughts. The first one was, and I texted you this, uh, Megan the Stallion being on some nerdy stuff. Yeah, come on. If I were single, I would have tried. I might have been yeah, successful. I mean, because the trick is the trick is to not act like you are like like you're trying too hard to impress her with the nerdy stuff. You just got to be you. That is true, and I got to be honest. If I was her, I never would have told the world about that. Like I would have never rolled out the carpet for all the dorks to rock up to me. Like maybe she had a point where she thinks that that they know better. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. But no, 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 no. I would not have been out there putting out like putting out put this just like hey all inviting all herbs wouldn't have been me. <laughs> not that everybody that's into anime is a herb. But I mean, y'all know it's a lot of herbs. Like we're not gonna pretend like it's not like it's a herbless situation. Is it wrong of me to admit that while Caleb, my older son, got into an anime phase, I was worried about that? <laughs> it's okay. It's like hey, look, man. It's kind of like like is that is you think that's maybe like how your dad felt when he was like rocking with that Weezer? Like oh boy, like, <laughs> is my kid bummed out? Do I, need to, no. do I need to go no, work I, on this? No. no, I can tell you the moment my dad was actually worried about me. I don't know if I've told you this story, but uh, in 1994, I wanted to go see Nine Inch Nails at Miami Arena. This was, you know, the self-destruct tour. This was Trent Reznor at his peak of his powers. Yeah, yeah, man, peak of his powers. And Marilyn Manson was opening up. All right, now let's, let's, we can, let's not talk about Marilyn Manson yes. today. We can talk about Marilyn Manson then, right? So Marilyn Manson comes out. He drops Trow to reveal a gigantic 
vinyl black strap on, which he stroked and things came out. It was, it was actually pretty practical effects wise, pretty impressive. My dad turns to me and he looks at me and he goes, are you into this shit? <laughs> And, and I, I'm 15, so I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm here for, I'm here for Nine Inch Nails. I, they're, like, I know who Marilyn Manson is. And then, and then my dad, being my dad, he goes, look, I saw Jim Morrison masturbate at the Orange Bowl and get arrested. This is nothing. If you're going to do it, do it. I was like, all right. All right. But he needed an answer right then <laughs> and there, right? Are you down with this fugazi dick beater? He needed an answer right there in front, nope. like in, in, in that moment. Shouts to him for actually going with you to this concert. And shouts to you for like being like, cool, let's all go. I got, I just like Nine Inch Nails, Nine Inch Nails with, uh, with her nine does not seem like what I think we'd be doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, like now that I look back on it, I have to admit, my dad did me a solid on that one. So, uh, like, I, I owe like, him. like, I don't know exactly how the OVCs wound up in America, but I just can't imagine, like, pack it up, pack it up, ship it out of Cuba, decide we go come do this American thing, and this is what it is, huh? This yeah. Is, this is, the- yeah. Well, look, you got to remember, my dad, I'll show you some old pictures of my dad. I don't have time to pull them up right now, but my dad was a hippie, dude. He had the long oh. hair, the mustache. He was wearing the fly clothes back in the day. They showed me a picture one time when my mom and my dad were dating at a party, and he is shit-faced in this photo. So, you know, you, you, know, you if, find out things about your parents when you get older and you actually have, like, adult heart-to-hearts, you know? Well, if, if that's the case, I know you well enough to know he's been worried about more than just Marilyn Mouse Manson and that dildo. He's had other moments. You just did, he just didn't tell you about them in that moment. I think I think anybody with kids would have those. I'm, Joe, I'm sure you've had that situation where you just go, "What is?" I, I know of moments with James for sure where you go, "Dude, what? What? Huh? What are we doing? What are we doing here?" Yeah. So, <laughs> speaking of what are we doing here, the other thought I had while I was listening to the podcast yesterday was you were talking about Caitlin Clark and Iowa and the the failure of the NCAA to leverage things, and that. I heard this after I had read from John Orran, longtime sports business reporter who is now with Puck News. Uh, He had a blurb in there, like a throwaway line about how Fox television executives had at least discussed the possibility of throwing Caitlin Clark NIL money to keep her at Iowa for television rating purposes, essentially, before she would go off to the WNBA. My first thought was both in how the NCAA has handled this and even how the television viewers or the television executives view this. It follows a pattern that maybe I'm off base on this, but it feels like even sports has forgotten that chasing the immediate return now is ultimately bad for you down the line rather than fostering things that would cultivate an audience rather than bringing in immediate traffic. I think Caitlin Clark's just the latest example of it. I mean, we are watching in real time as the problem that men's college basketball has is that there's zero familiarity, right? We don't know who any of these people are. They don't stick around. Like when you think about, and I guess it's a little different for you guys because you're, you know, immersed in a market where where this is a thing. But I think about all the random college basketball players that you just knew because they were there for so long. Like I'll just throw one out here. Ryan Reed at Florida State, right? People had passionate opinions about Ryan Reed at Florida State because years passed and Ryan Reed doing Ryan Reed stuff that you had a feeling about Ryan Reed. We knew who all the white boys were at Duke. All the way down the end of the bench, we knew every single one of them for decades, and it was a matter of familiarity. And so with Clark, I get the idea that you push what's going on with her because she is like a singular star, right? But at the same time, once she's out of there, what you going to do? South Carolina is undefeated again. Again. We're not. And this isn't at a UConn level where you just feel like this happens every year. We're not there. I personally can't tell you nobody that plays for South Carolina. And no. you can make the argument that that's my own weakness and that's fine. But my point is, I didn't go looking for Caitlin Clark either, right? These things were brought to me. Mm-hmm. And at a time where the interest in women's college basketball is as high as it's ever been, I just don't feel like they're doing it right in terms of selling the whole thing. Isn't the problem with women's college basketball the same problem as men's college basketball and that we only care about the tournament? Um, I think that that is what it has evolved into for the men's tournament. I don't think it has to be that for the women at this point. Like for one, Caitlin Clark is an example of something that is big, you know, separate from the tournament that people care about. But like, 
I I love Kim Mulkey because I don't. Right. <laughs> right. Like right. there's an actual personality there that's willing to say things that I find to be offensive and will right. stand on it. Look me in the face and dare me to be mad, right? Like there's a wrestling troll element that's there. The coaches, we know who the coaches are. There are personalities that are there with the coaches. They ain't all wearing goddamn pullovers, half zip, quarter zips. You know what I'm saying? Because they're mm -hmm. too lazy to get dressed. Like these dudes I got caught up in over that time like they have all the elements that are there and i think that they can get people to care because there are going to be individual games that come up that have a level of drama like college basketball has always had that advantage over the nba there are fewer games so there's drama that surrounds those games in a way that isn't going to be the case when you've got 82 of them in best of seven series once you get there women's ball has all of these facets they're all there it's just a matter of how you decide to push it yeah they push the individual which is a basketball problem at this point, basketball yes. is a team sport that has been prioritized for the individual. I don't know if that's going to be LeBron James's lasting legacy, you know, 40,000 points, you know, countless trips to the finals, all that kind of stuff. But his lasting legacy might just be he ushered in an era where we care about the guy or the woman in this case, and not really about the team, which will will, will tie us into a conversation about Duke and Carolina, because Joe and I got into an argument before you came on in relation to NC State, because it looks like NC State's going to have to go in a different direction with head coach uh, at the rate things are going. And Joe, you're basically of the opinion with Duke and Carolina, like the NIL era changes everything. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, you, even Carolina fans and Duke fans are like, who are these guys? Where did Harrison Ingram come from? You know, like that kind of stuff. Will they work out this year? Brady Manick came from Oklahoma, worked out. Pete Nance didn't. But the key difference were, I think, State and Carolina are versus where State is, or Duke and Carolina are where State is, is that there's so much built into both Duke and Carolina that it doesn't matter, that people are still fans of the teams. So when you get the guy from Stanford to transfer in or the guy from Notre Dame to transfer in and they put on that UNC uniform, now they're one of your guys and now you're going to root for him and it doesn't matter. The question is, how long does that last? That's Tar Heel for life, as I've been told about Caleb yes. Love. Yeah, Caleb yes. Love, Tar Heel for life, man. How long does that last, though? Well, I was going to say, though, Caleb Love becomes a fascinating case because I think that Tar Heel for Life thing with him is real. Just, you mm -hmm. know, from what we can tell, sometimes Please you got to go, right? Brain. You know, some, sometimes, sometimes you just have to go do something else. But then he came back and won at Cameron again and gave right. him the patronizing no, wave. Dude. And it was just like, no, 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 he really is. Like, yeah. that's he, he's there. But I find him to be an interesting case in that regard because he, because of moments, he is that guy in that place. He just doesn't play there mm -hmm. anymore. Maybe it goes different if it's like a Brady Manning case where you come in for the year and then there is a great season or a great finish or whatever it is that's attached to it. And then you become, you know, that person or whatever. But I think that people are going to attach themselves to these mercenaries who show up and they'll root for them while they're there. But we're being silly if we don't think it's going to be different. Like, it's not going to feel the same. The big the big place where this stuff is not going to feel the same is these dudes ain't going to stick around through no tough times no more. And I think that there are attachments that you get to players by riding it out with them through some rough stuff. And then you get to the end to be like, like the example I give on that one all the time is Quentin Thomas, where it started off with him being legitimately terrifying to a, wow, we won all these games with Ty Lawson being hurt. And in the end, you take that ride with them. These cats are bailing before you take that ride. Like, I don't give a damn where Garrison Brooks' daddy worked. You transferred from Carolina to go to Mississippi State and you yeah. didn't have to? Yeah, that's why it's weird with Armando Baycott, right? You know, Ar Armando Baycott had his second senior day yesterday. And we we joked about it earlier. His first season was the Cole Anthony year, which is the for very forgettable season for North Carolina. And we can roll our eyes all we want about adversity sticking through it. NIL money certainly helps uh, to stick around Carolina. But Dude went through some shit, and he's still there. And while he doesn't necessarily rack it up, and he might not have a title to his name, I think Carolina fans are going to love Armando Baker because of what you just said. He actually stuck it out. Here's the thing about that money, and maybe this is me, A, sounding like an older person, and B, like, I got to be careful how I talk about money with people. You know what I mean? Like, I, I am not, the, I am no longer the people's champ in that regard. It can be very easy for me to like say things that make me sound out of touch. Like, I recognize. Yeah, how that. much is the hoodie you got on today? It's not as expensive as you would think. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's not the. It's not, it's not it cashmere. Cashmere. Oh, it's but, it, but it, but it is cashmere. Oh, okay, imported, imported from Italy. 
Okay. Uh, the end of the but <laughs> let's, just, let, let's just be honest about this. We all know enough about money, and we all know enough about being that age. Them dudes getting that money, they ain't turning that money into nothing that's turning into no money. Like, their, their lives in the end, like in the long run ways that we think about money, their lives ain't going to be no different with or without that money. By yeah. and large, that money is getting set on fire in just about every case because that's what you do at that age when you get a bunch of money, especially with these kids being into chains and shit. Like, like that that money is getting torched. So, yeah, you could go to the place that's going to give you that money, but by and large, that money's going to go to places that young people put money into. I, I, you crack me up but with your... Your hoodies and the difference. All right. Now, Duke and Carolina play on Saturday. You are not uh, here anymore. Is this one of those games that still hits your radar on Saturday night that you'll you'll tune in? Yeah, I'll check it out. It still feels like something, right? Like, I missed the the uh, Coach K's last game in Cameron because I had to go to the Sloan Conference, and so I was riding the Amtrak back, and I was watching the game on an app. And when I say I was watching the game on an app, I don't mean I was watching – People play the game. I was watching the scores and the totals change mm-hmm. on the app, and it was riveting. I tell yeah, you, you, you texted me. You texted me while you were on the train because you were yes. like, "Please describe the scene." What for is me. It? <laughs> <laughs> like this can't really be happening, can it? Yeah. This, is, yeah. this, this isn't a thing, and it was such a thing. It still, it still gets me. Like it's. I mean, I guess I've been gone now for eleven years, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy to think about. But it's the day of a Carolina Duke game. That is still the day that I miss. The Wednesday one in particular, because it's like, that's like going to work on Christmas Eve. Like, you really have to do this? <laughs> Can you muster up enough hate for Kyle Filipowski, or are you waiting for Cooper Flag? The Cooper Flag. Oh, you got to save it up. Right you got to save it up. You got to save it up. The flip dude don't seem to be such a bad dude. He just seemed to be a white dude that go to Duke. But this Cooper Flag thing, it seemed like a certain measure of destiny. Except, like, that, the, the white dude with that game, he didn't used to go to Duke, right? Like, like right. this is the guy. Yeah. He's the combination of new Duke and old Duke at the same time. And I think I. I, I think I saw something indicating that he might be a jerk. I don't know if he actually is, but it's better for all parties involved if he's a jerk. Like we the Zion thing him. wasn't really that fun because he wasn't a jerk. If he had been a jerk, it'd have been great. We need we need the content. Uh, Duke hasn't had that level. Like you know how desperate we are for like decent Duke content these days. That when Wake Forest stormed the court and he had the Filipowski stuff and all that, you and I recognize this. We saw the Shire face for the first time since he's been a head coach. <laughs> I'm waiting on that, man. Like, I felt Yo. like I was back in Terp Town looking at my Photoshop of him doing, you know, getting shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald. I mean, back in the I, day. I didn't think he could still do it. Oh, I he didn't do think it. he could. I mean, but I mean, I could understand doing it in a basketball game. I didn't think he did that all the time. I think it's it's been interesting. John is is very even keel about stuff very even keel about stuff and i think that's what we're trying to figure out with these new guys right both hubert davis and mike chef and 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 john shire we knew the roy greatest hits you know after a loss the three of us could predict how roy was going to go about talking about a loss right coach k same thing man that's a game you shouldn't have lost and he's mad how is he going to talk about it? oh well you can talk about xyz right it's a man's game they need this blah 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 with hubert and john we don't know yet and john tries to be very calm very even keel and i don't know if he can take it to a level that mike or i don't know if it's necessary because no no, well well, nobody can take it to the level that mike krzyzewski could take it to there's no way you you gotta if you if you didn't serve then I don't know if you're capable of going to the place that Krzyzewski would go to under these circumstances. What is, I think, interesting with Hubert, and I guess you guys have certainly talked about this more than me. I just pop in every now and then. But, well, I guess he can coach because it was looking a little dicey, right? Like, like in, in the time that Hubert been there, we had, we, we'd had ups and downs on, so yeah. how good do we think he is at this? And it looks like he's actually good at this. Another example of Roy Williams is somewhere being like, you guys never listen to me when I tell you anything, but I sure seem to be right all the time now, don't I? Well, that's a fascinating situation that Joe and I have talked about. And that and, and Luke DeCock at the News and Observer, we've all talked about this. Where Roy's from, how he came up is decidedly not Carolina, right? Correct. They just wanted him to come back, coach this team to some championships, and that's the end of it, as if he doesn't know other things. And I right. think there's an element of that that still is at play with Hubert Davis because they want to chase the shiny objects everywhere else. But I think Hubert Davis is fine. 
No, I mean, it's... I had, it was fair to have lots of questions about what in the world Roy had on his mind when he decided, like when they brought him back to be an assistant coach, which was clearly the beginning mm-hmm. for him of getting to this point. But Roy, for whatever reason, he's just not that easy to believe. When he says that something's going to work, he'll be like, yeah, all right, Roy, never mind all this winning that he has done in like every turn, right? Like all this level of success. He is a walking, I tried to tell you. Everything about Roy is I tried to tell you. And we're like, yeah, Roy, you're right. Anyway, give me something else to act like you're not right about. We'll do that right now. Speaking of college basketball moments uh, that either have hit your radar or haven't, did you catch any of Rick Pitino's undressing of his team, public undressing of his team after the Seton Hall loss? Is that the one where you talked about how he's just, they weren't athletic, they weren't talented enough, they weren't any of those things? Straight up, basically motherfucked his whole entire roster, even Mm -hmm. by name, basically, and the kid, including the kid from Apex. Oh, yeah. And Brady, he's weak. <laughs> it's like, what? And of Yo, course, Petito being Petito, they turn around and win the next effing game against course. Marquette. Of I'm course. like, Jesus Christ, how does this shit still play in 24? First of all, first of all he's so good at this. Like, that's he really the, is. The, the <laughs> biggest problem with him is that he's just like, to me, in terms of we need to win a basketball game. And the only thing I know about that game is that we need to win it. I don't know who our players are. I don't know who we're playing against. I don't know. It's Rick Pitino and Larry Brown. Those are the two guys where I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, they're going to give me a chance to figure out how to do this. What I just can't understand about him is, and I guess it's just a general thing about people in life, but dude, how is it never your fault? Like, how is it really that difficult to just say, Hey man, some of this is on me. I, I I don't know what your life is at this point. Like you've been married, you got kids, you got all this stuff that should have taught you that just being like, yo, my bad. It's just not that hard to do, especially in the face of this. If you want to put it on them kids and nobody's around, that's fine. But if you're Rick Patino in particular, man, come out here and take every bullet for these dudes in front of people. Every single one. He was wistful about Boston. I was gonna say, Bo, comparison. he even said like. I, I've been around some bad things, and but I really this is the worst experience I've ever had, and Not I'm like, holy shit, dude! Come okay, on. And wait a minute, it wasn't the next game, the one where he came out with the white suit talking yes. about how I knew the players we get a kick yeah. out. Of, let me take, let me, let me just run something by you right fast, man. Some white man come talk crazy to me in front of the world, and then show up in a white suit. That ain't gonna get, <laughs> I ain't get a kick out of that at all. That ain't gonna make me feel good. What, what, what the hell? So, what, what's so enjoyable about this? You want me to call you Colonel? This is what are you talking about? No. I'm not doing that. Absolutely not doing that. But if we close on this, it, Patino is the last it, to get back to Mike Krzyzewski and, and John Shire and how Hubert Davis has to talk to players. And I know, Joe, you've talked about this with Kevin Keats. Uh, and I think you and Dominique were talking about this uh, last Friday with the, the whole concept of the new dudes, right? How do you get through at this point? How do you get through? I don't understand. I don't talk to kids regularly. Right. So I like I'm not around them to understand what it is that they can and cannot handle. But I just I just feel like at some point people just need to try this one. Right. And and I could be wrong about this. You let me know. OK. Right? But nobody wants to feel like they soft. And you're not going to make me believe that we're still not in a world where you can encourage people to do stuff just quite honestly through negative peer pressure. <laughs> like you just like, like you're being a sucker right now. Do you want to be a sucker right now? Nobody mm-hmm. wants to be a sucker right now. You're just not going to make me believe that people can't rise up above that. And I do think that there's something that you just have to hit people with to make them feel like, yo, you're being a sucker right now. Just letting everybody down. And how do you make them feel like that without like, like, how do you make them feel like they're being a sucker right now? Not that they are suckers by nature. I feel even like they are suckers by nurture, from what I can tell. I feel I feel like you've sat in on a conversation with me and Joe before we're recording, and we're talking about uh, the annoyances that we have with our respective children about yes. certain things. And it's yes. like, how do we how do we try to balance? It's a new age and w- w- stuff that's no longer acceptable, but also still getting through to them. Do not be that guy. Yeah. Do not be any number of things that would be considered problematic now. How do you express that? Once that gets figured out, I feel like I can make a lot of money on a book, honestly. Well, I mean, and if this is what they're into, you know, we have to throw this disclaimer out there now. I think basically you just got to get the idea across, hey, man, you're never going to meet any girls acting like that. 
Like, no matter what it is, like, I feel like if you could sell that point across to those who are into such things, like, you yeah. don't go meet any girls acting like that. Yeah, that get you out of it. That's exactly how I got through to the 15 year old on hygiene. Yeah. Right. Because, like, you know, because now you never have to leave your place. You never have to leave your room. You know, you got your computer, yeah. you got your phone, you can communicate, whatever. I'm like, right, right, right. But when you're in the real world and you smell, it's not, no, it's just not going to work. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, like I can't think of, I guess I'll just put it out there. People can figure out which words they want to put in which blank, but that blank ain't going to blank itself. Nope. You know? Nope. I mean, On that I, note. I guess you can blank the blank, but if you want someone else, like it's not, that blank's not going to blank itself. <laughs> put it out there. No, <laughs> you know? You're, yeah, you're right. It's, it's usually a life-changing event for all of our trajectories once you figure that out. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it, 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 no matter what the night is, if it winds up with somebody at the end, man, I'm like, well, this blank ain't gonna blank itself. Clarity will probably ensue. And then probably. you get the, and then you get the other clarity after the fact. Actually, right. don't put it on a shirt, put it on a cashmere hoodie. <laughs> For the premium collection. <laughs> All right. Our Kirkland asses are gonna get out of here. All right, but Monty, we appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you later. I think it was like 150. I think. <laughs> oh, uh, I not, not as much enough. as you thought. No big deal. <laughs>
But I would tell you that like the amount of money flowing through his business is a lot more than like your local Walmart, right? Like mm -hmm. it's hundreds of millions of dollars. It is just the, like all that money is coming through advertising. And then he puts it right back out when he buys like an island in the Outer Banks or like a train to crash into something. So like it's... <laughs> like the lar like the largest employer in 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 Greenville is the hospital system, six thousand people. So you're not like on that level. Yeah. But like, it's like he's significant enough that like local economic development people who like measure this kind of thing are like looking at him. They're like, hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like he, he fits in over here. I kind of get that. So for the our, our Jeremy, hello, how are you? Um, I'm great. Sorry about our deeks letting us down, and I apologize in advance if it's me who's cursing them. Might be. Um, our, our YouTube audience tends to, our podcast audience tends to be younger than our radio audience, but there's probably still some people out there listening like, okay, Mr. Beast does what now? Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an example. So my son James is a freshman at ECU. And apparently, and now I don't know how apocryphal all of these stories are and how real they are. But the first week on campus, there was a person who works for Mr. Beast going up to people on the campus as they were walking to and from class and asking, do you follow Mr. Beast on YouTube? And the people who said yes and could show them on their phone that they followed him, he paid their tuition and bills for that semester. That's crazy. And so James was like, I missed it. He's <laughs> What he was like going if, crazy? If we walked up to people, and Jeremy, you're included in this. If you, if we all walked up to people and said, "Hey, do you guys subscribe to our podcast?" We'll get you, we'll we'll, get you a coffee. Here's a, here's a sticker. I got stickers. <laughs> Y'all like you? You can you can put it on a water bottle. <laughs> Just think about that. Just think about the usefulness of a cool. water bottle sticker. I mean, come on. I can give you right now. Like no questions asked. Like, don't, <laughs> you, I, but isn't that? But isn't that part of the mystery of Mister Beast? Yeah. Right. Like, like for it's not him because they would all recognize him. But so it's like they would recognize him. But I think the, the, yeah, the, the, the kids youths. would. But most yeah. people wouldn't no. know Mister Beast. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, well, no. I would recognize him because video yeah. too. But. I spend so much time on YouTube now trying to learn things that yeah, I know from him. Yeah, from him, and I, I know what he looks like. So I guess that's the other part of this. You, you're never really going to be able to get a handle on it because it's very kind of mysterious it's it, it's it, that's part of the hook like we worked with a guy uh this is steven was really really hype about the fact that he was an extra on a mr beast video it was one of these uh there's an assassin in a house that's trying to kill mr beast right and he said at the end of the event it was just mr beast on top of this house with a money gun just spraying money everywhere and i'm like well yeah if you're a kid that's amazing but for the most part you don't know how the economics work for these type of people. I think people are just so hyped to be a part of it that they don't care. And I think that was like that was the thing with Steven. He was just so hyped to be a part of it, he didn't care. And you can't measure that in Greenville, can you? I mean, people will go to Greenville and not like I'm not telling you like there's like a pot like a, like, like an industry of people that will go there just to be like maybe I'll see Mr. Beast. Um, but people will go there like like stop in in the same way that you might stop in if you saw something on YouTube, um, you know, and like, oh, that seems interesting. I should like if I'm driving by, I should check, check this out. Like maybe if I go and have lunch in Greenville, I'll bump into Mr. Beast. There's this other class of people who are like moving there to work for Mr. Beast. Like like if you go like if you go on Indeed.com, like like kind of boring, like I'm looking for a job. This is a listing. Like what's the description and whatever like that. Like it is weird if you go on like Greenville Indeed, like there's a bunch of listings for like Mr. Beast's jobs. Um, so it's like a very real thing um, for like people who want to work there. And, and on top of that, like again, like he's sort of like I, I've heard him described as like the modern Willy Wonka. Like mm -hmm. you just never know if he's going to show up somewhere, and if he does, you better be ready. Like With he might pay my tuition. You better have, <laughs> it. You better know. You better have it. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's like he has this weird magic. And I, but I think it all kind of comes back to something that I kind of realized from working when I worked in like local TV and I knew you could probably get this from radio and that like people were just like hyped to be like on TV or on the radio yes. or whatever. Like there's just still, and the, now it is like the YouTube level is like they're hyped to be in a Mr. Beast YouTube video, right? Like mm -hmm. it's that level of thing that we like, you can point at like 20 years from now. I'd be like, you know, I was like, like I still say, like I was an extra in Talladega Nights in 2005, 
Was I in the movie for more than a half a second in focus in the background? No. Am I going to like brag about that till the end of time? Yes. And so the new version of that is like, oh man, I was in a Mr. Beast video. Like you want to watch it right now? I'll get my phone out. We can do it. It's cool. I can prove it. And like, that's this like cultural currency now that you can get from, from just being near him. Hey man, uh, speaking of Stevens, uh, Steven, the barber, um, mm -hmm. got into like the Mr. Beast orbit slightly. And I don't think I'm telling anything that Steven wouldn't uh, mind saying, but like he sees this really expensive car pull up to his space and it's very just inconspicuous, but apparently he was like Mr. Beast number two guy. Like he's the guy behind the guy. Mm hmm. And of course, like an idiot, I'm like, well, hey, man, you let him know that there's these two like ex media jabronis trying to get this YouTube thing going up, man. I just want to like have him clown our YouTube stuff. Of course, I never really, you know, like what my my dream is to get Mr. Beast in studio to look at all of our YouTube thumbnails and editing stuff and just roast it. Here's what you're doing wrong. I think that that would be good content. You what know, you, you think, know, a long time ago which is like five, six years ago when I was doing um, the, the, you know, I was making podcasts and one of the podcast episodes I did was I was able to somehow talk my way up to go up like uh, 1800 feet up a 2000 foot tall television tower, mm -hmm. um, which is a great podcast, um, extremely video, but it was a podcast. So it's like, uh, oh, well, um, but I want to say like a year or two after that podcast came out, I got a phone call from this woman who was a producer and she was like, hey, how did you do that? And I was like, well, technically, like, I know somebody who knows somebody. And the tower climber hired, hired me as an employee for the day. So that's how I went up there. But like, yeah, I'm, I can put you in contact with them. She's like, okay, great. Yeah, this is great. And I'm like, who are you producer for? And she's like, oh, I'm producer for Mr. Beast. <laughs> and I was like, who, who's, who's Mr. Beast? And she explained to me, again, my, you know, I got my finger on the zeitgeist here. She explained to me who Mr. Beast was. And she told me the same thing. She's like, you know how much work we put into the thumbnails. She's like, that's the secret. Everything we do is got to have a cool dude. thumbnail. Yep. You know, so like they've been onto the thumbnail game forever. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I'm seeing now about Mr. Beast is people are talking about how his videos are actually starting to like slow down. Like they're not yeah. like yeah. a frenetic pace because they kind of think he's eventually looking for an exit plan from YouTube because how long can you keep this up? And how long can you keep this like, insane pace going so it's like he's starting to experiment with like hey could this work as a television show because a television mm -hmm. show is a slower pace than this um yeah but you know i don't know yeah, it's interesting he's to see doing like the thing, strong Regal when that happens he's he's doing the thing that just about every content creator deals with when they hit 25 26 they're old so how do you evolve that of doing stuff that used to be that is a young man's game this is stuff that joe dealt with i dealt with you dealt with we all deal with it Mr. Beast is no different. All right, Jeremy, before we say goodbye, do we know what that Outer Banks Island is for? They, sh I believe they bought it and sh like he didn't buy like all of Hatteras Island. He bought like some tiny little like sand. He's turning the water for like a dollar. Yeah, for like nothing at all. It's like hard to get to, but I think they shot, I think he bought it just to shoot a video on it. Okay. And that was it. So, so now What's he has, nice? I think he has an island out there. I mean, good for him. We can go to the Mr. Beast Island, give out some stickers to him, whoever, whoever might be there. So, all right, Jeremy, appreciate it, man. NC Rabbit Hole is the newsletter on the podcast. We'll talk to you later. All right, see y'all. Big thanks to Breeze Through for sponsoring Ovias and Jillio. Check them out, breezethrough.com. Actually, meeting up with Adam over at Breeze Through this week to talk about some, some future plans, some big plans that we got coming up. We got our anniversary party. We do. I think the food truck's going to be out there for that. Perfect. And we might have something cooking up in August. I like that. We'll see where we go with it. In the meantime, while you're driving around doing your spring break shenanigans and everything else, drop on by breeze throughs. Drop on by the breeze throughs across the state, of course, across the triangle. Also, big thanks to the Butchers Market for sponsoring Ovi's and Jillio. Check them out. Butchersmarkets.com. Sign up for the sake of the month club. I actually saw some people posting their latest meats that have arrived. Mm. I saw, I think it was short ribs this last time. Mm -hmm. And some of the social media pictures that I saw, people cooking them up. Looked absolutely fantastic. So head on over to thebutchersmarkets.com to find out more. Better yet, drop on by their new location, Lake Moon Shopping Plaza. You can get uh, one of their signature steak sandwiches. They got an Italian sandwich. They got all sorts of goodies. So again, big thanks to the Butcher's Market.
All right, let's get out of here with some hey Joe questions. I mentioned a lot of the comments in YouTube, and they're just a lot of hey, you know, Kevin Keats, it's time for him to go. Well, who are you going to get next? That kind of stuff. I'm sure we'll spend more time talking about that as the season comes to a close and, and where things go next. Let's head on over to Twitter where Chris over at the Glass Jug. Go check out Glass Jug uh, in Durham. Uh, frequent 919 Vice guest. This is from Title League. Does UNC hate Duke or NC State more? And this is from Theo Pinson. Are you ready, Joe? I am ready. I already know. Now, I will tell you from the player's perspective. There's a lot of guys who don't like Duke. But the guys that I play with when I was there, you, Joel, Kennedy, Zay, uh, Nate, Marcus, Bryce, we hate NC State. Yes. There's there's more of a a hate side of things to NC State for sure. I can't. Stand the mother. <laughs> I want to beat the brakes off of them every <laughs> single time. If NC State came to me and was like, Theo, we want to offer you. <laughs> I hate y'all. I can't stand them. What do you think that is? Bro, first of all, they're like Cowboys fans. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry to say it. I'm sorry to say they're they're borderline cowboys. <laughs> Chill on the cowboys, bro. Unrealistic expectations. Uh, <laughs> you think you're going to win it every damn year. This is the year. This is the year. No, the f- it's not. Bro. Excuse my language. They suck yeah, they every have. year. What was that record we were talking about yesterday, last night? Bro, they keep saying rivalry. It's like they're like, we're like 44 and 8 <laughs> in the last match. It's not a rivalry. Let's just say annual ass whooping. <laughs> it's little, like, at this point, it's little bro and big bro. Come on. You know? Listen, bro. And sometimes little bro misses, big bro lets the little bro win so they don't cry. You know what I mean? We let them win a couple times. Got to build their confidence. Let up. them build their confidence. But I'll tell you one thing. We not losing there. We're going to whoop your ass at home. <laughs> I ain't never lost in peeing, peaky, whatever the hell that damn arena is. <laughs> so anyway. That was Justin Jackson. <laughs> Theo uh, I, I enjoyed Theo talking, uh, re- referencing to NC State as NC Stank. That was enjoyable. Sure. I enjoyed that. You know why? Why? Because you care. You care. That's what makes a rivalry, dude. You care. Your football team not showing up in Raleigh was more disrespectful than anything else. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to care. Mm-hmm. And you cared. That's good. That's awesome. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. We will see you for an OG live brought to you by Sleek Fleet. Check them out. Sleek-fleet.com. See you at 2 o'clock on YouTube. All right. Let's...